Well, listen, if you're going to be a leader, why not be a high impact leader? Why not be one that is challenging cultural and, and social norms? We as believers have to resist, uh, go against the grain. And there comes a time that we have to say enough is enough. That is not okay. It is not biblical. It is not going to affect my children. It is not going to mess with the next generation. And Christy Narcy is one of those women. She has dedicated her life to jumping in the ring and fighting things and being a voice and an advocate. And that's only one of the things she does. She is an author and she is a mother and she is a minister. Uh, She is a real estate tycoon. She is a designer, uh, award-winning, and just she has a plethora of talents that the Lord has given her that she has stewarded. And today we get to hear her story and her heart. So Christy, thank you so much for being here. I so appreciate you having me here, Jen. This is wonderful. Well, you are my kind of girl. (laughs) I think we have the same kind of head going on here. The thoughts are the same here. Yeah, it's awesome. (laughs) Okay, so it's always fun, especially for viewers that are like, who's Christy? Why hasn't she been on my radar? Why do I not know about her? It's always fun to go all the way back, share your testimony, you know, share how you came to know Christ. And by the way, if you're watching, you can go to christynarcy.com. She's got e-courses, her book is there. You can book her to speak, uh, women's events. And uh, listen, legislators, you meet with legislators and you meet with decision makers. And so thank you for being a gift to the body of Christ. Oh, thank you for saying that. Absolutely. Yep. I love to serve. It's evident. It is evident. <laughs> and um, and thank you for taking on the tough cases. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're in a really rough time right now. Yeah. And it's definitely not the time to be quiet. Like you said, it's not the time to be silent. It's really the time to challenge. Yeah every belief that we have and break it down and say, is this serving me? Is it serving the body of Christ? Is it serving our nation? And so that's what I've been trying to do. Just, you know, what do we need to fix to get back on the road to success around here? Yeah, you're, 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 you are charging forward and you are, you know, you are forging a path. You're, you are pioneering Mm. and lots of people will follow you. They are following you, but just will recognize that. So Sometimes the, those those forerunners, it's a, it's a lonely it's a lonely walk, okay. um, but it's worth it. Yeah. Cause he'll say, "Well done." Mm. Okay, so how did you start your journey with Jesus? Wow, my journey <laughs> with Jesus goes so far back. I was a little girl. I was raised in church. Uh, I was raised in, um, I guess you'd call charismatic, spirit filled church, and um, I did kind of the normal probably kid thing or church kid thing, maybe, right? I rebelled. Yes. (laughs) Maybe I shouldn't call it normal. Um, You know, and, uh, but then came back to the Lord actually through my husband. Awesome. Yeah. So he's East Indian. Yeah. And he was raised Hindu. Wow. And he came to know the Lord and I had never seen, and to this day have never seen a transformation like that. Wow. It was unbelievable. (laughs) And so, it just made me think, what am I doing? What am I doing? Yeah. If God can do that, I am definitely going down the wrong road. So I came back to the Lord and we served in youth group and we got married and the rest was history. Yay, you had children. <laughs> mm-hmm. so. Yeah, so we have two daughters. We've been married 26 years now and our girls are 22 years old and 24 years old. Well, you married a good man because he has um, been by your side. Uh, In all of our lives, there are twists and turns and there's things that we don't foresee and that we don't expect and we can't believe it. And I love your book and it's an Mm -hmm. e-book. So you can, it's Prosperity of Providence and we're gonna really unpack it on another show. But I want you to tell the story um, behind the book, your personal story when you just kind of hit a wall and you're like, Lord, where, what, who, wow. Um, 13 or so years ago, I would say is the first time that I really had what I would call the dark night of the soul. Yeah. Um, when I faced depression and, you know, I'd been serving full-time in ministry for about 10 years at that point. And I didn't know what was wrong with me, but all of a sudden I was going home and I would just in the fetal position on the floor crying for 45 minutes at a time and just not being able to understand what was going on inside of me. Um, I started having anxiety. 
attacks. And that was all new to me. And it was just like, what is going on? Because the church was thriving. Yeah. We had gone from 200 to 2,000 in two years. Wow. So it wasn't like we, <laughs> this was an incredibly successful church. And, uh, and I was serving as the operations director and I loved it. I had an amazing team around me of people that are just irreplaceable, incredible volunteers. Yeah. And so why was I so unhappy? Why was I so depressed? What was going on under the hood? You know, something wasn't quite right. And so I did what I needed to do at that time, was focus on being an entrepreneur. My husband and I stepped down from our positions at the church and we went into real estate and I had a design background. I went to school for interior design. Yeah. And so we flipped houses because we thought, hey, we're already stressed. Why not be stressed yeah. more, you know? Like, that's kind of how you look at it. I what we were thinking. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Looking yeah. back in retrospect, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so we did that. And through that process, I really had to unpack what was going on between God and I. Yeah. And I've taken my walk with the Lord very seriously. Probably a year into our The first year of marriage was really not good. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised <laughs> we made it through that. Um, but I realized really quick, like, God, I can't control this. I don't understand what's going on. I don't know what to do, but what I do know is to lean into you. Yeah. That's the only thing I know. And so uh, I just committed. I said, God, I'm going to spend day time with you every single day. Yeah. And so I did that. And I started to lose the codependency. Mm -hmm. I started to lose, you know, I started facing the things, right? At a young age, at that point, 20, well, we got married at 19 and 20. Yeah. So very young age. So I was committed and all the time that I was in ministry, I was still studying the word. I loved it. I mean, my favorite pastime, reading, understanding the Greek and the original language yes. of the Bible and seeing how all the parts come together and just knowing the Lord, so important to me. And it never stopped being important to me. But when I suffered from depression, it was so, it was so shocking and traumatizing because yeah. it's like, God, I've been walking with you seriously all these years, yeah. I've been taking this seriously. This is the pursuit of my life. How could the Christian walk end up like this, right? right? So there was a lot to unpack there. Yeah. And I started to realize that we had been through a lot of challenges in life, even from the time that I was a kid. And a lot of just difficult things had happened. And, and I just, I had this theology that most of us do, right? That God is allowing and sometimes even orchestrating this type of pain, right? Because it grows us into the person that he needs us to be. Or, and, and if you translate that, how does that translate? Well, he's waterboarding you until you're better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's how, you know, the person who has been through abuse or suffering doesn't hear that the way we hear it, that's right? right? And so I looked back over my life and, you know, about that time the market had crashed and we were tithers. We gave, oh, we, we tithed on our gross and gave over and above that yeah. because we were so convinced that giving was the right way to do things. We loved giving. Um, how could we end up overnight losing everything in that market crash? Yeah. Going down to just my income at the time was a church salary. And so, um, God, why did you not stop this nightmare? Yeah. How did the tithing not work? Right? Yeah. <laughs> so I had to, I had to face, okay, something's not right because if God did that to me, right. in other words, if this was part of the training path, then I had to get real with God yeah. um, because it broke my heart. I had a broken heart and I didn't know what that meant, mm. but I remember the moment that I sat with the Lord and I said, God, I will love you the rest of my life, but my heart is so broken and you broke it. Yeah. yeah. But that's the only outcome we can come up with, right? If we're told from the time we're, you know, God's got a plan for your life. Yeah. But you're going to have to go through some testing and suffering. Well, then he's doing it to you. Yeah. So all of a sudden, God's the abuser. So I had to work that out. Yeah. <laughs> and how do you work that out? Well, you write the book eventually, I guess. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, so that is a, that was a long journey. It took a good another 10 years, probably, yeah. until... The next trauma that was probably worse than anything we've ever been through. I, I just think that there's so much because there's women watching who are in pain. They're conflicted. You're taught one thing when you're little. You translate it. Uh, it gets all jarbled up. You, and then, right. you know, like for me in my own life, I, I, I started doing PR for God. You know, I started like helping 
explain because I didn't want God to look bad, yeah, you know, for some of the good. suffering I was going through. So I became his PR person and he didn't need me to be his PR person. He needed me to be quiet mm. and get healed and understand yeah. his heart instead of man's theology, and good. which is a similar situation. But we fast forward to a few years ago, you had a devastating loss of a best yeah. friend. And um, let's go there because, you know, pain, uh, that is a universal thing that we all yeah. go through. And, um, and, and processing that pain, how we process it, and we need help, you know, yeah. and, and that's why your book's important, your life, your ministry, all of the nuggets that you got in that decade where you were just on your face with him, um, th they help people in pain so that we yeah. can get out of pain and we can be prosper prosperous, yep. you know, according to the word of God. So let's go to when your best friend, you yeah. know. So in 1997, that's the year that my husband and I got married and we met a couple that got married that same year. Yeah. And they were our best friends. We were the couple's best friends and we spent even holidays, Christmas and Thanksgiving together. We were just so tight. They considered my parents, um, second parents to them. And so uh, we were family. Yeah. And my husband and I started having kids and they hadn't yet, yeah. and so Michelle, Auntie Shell, is what she called herself, so she wanted the girls to call her Auntie Shell. She would bounce them on her knee when they were toddlers <laughs> and say, Auntie Shell, because she was determined their first words were gonna be Auntie Shell. <laughs> so she was just the, she was just so full of life, and she loved those. She helped me raise my girls, wow. and they loved her. She was that go-to, okay, mom, all the way up until high school, if mom and, if we're not communicating, Auntie Shell will help us figure this yeah. out, you know? So she was an amazing support to us. And uh, after about 21 years, um, Peter and Michelle had been married 21 years and we tragically lost Peter. Oh. Um, and they hadn't had kids. Michelle had always wanted them, he didn't. And you know, that's a decision you make yeah. together. And so she decided, she went through three years of counseling, tried to you know, just strengthen up after such a tragic loss. Yeah. And uh, then she decided, you know, I wanna be a mama. And so she adopted her first child at the age of 47. Good for Very her. Very brave for her, yeah. yeah. And she brought that baby home from the hospital day one. And that was her baby. And yours too, because of your relationship, right? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Now you're Auntie Christy. <laughs> yep, it was my turn, yeah, absolutely. It was my turn now to be the auntie. And, um, but of course, God was moving us in a different direction. So she was about three months old when we moved to Texas. So we, we know that we heard God say we were in Arizona and we know we heard him say, sell everything you have, give it all away and follow me. And I tell people all the time, don't be impressed by that because Jesus said that to one person and that person had a heart issue, yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> so there was clearly something that God was trying to work in me that I wasn't getting. Yeah. And, um, when we see testing in scripture, it, it's not testing the way that we think of testing. It's really an opportunity. God's putting an opportunity in front of us to see mir the miraculous yes. and to help us see what we're not seeing. Yeah. He's been trying to say it all along, right? But it's like, you don't get it yet. And so um, looking back, I know for absolute certain that what he was trying to prove to me was that writing, speaking, teaching, this was what I was called to what else would I give everything up for right. to do, right? And so I finally got the point. <laughs> Took a long time and a lot of money, <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> so we were in Texas. We actually renovated a 40-foot fifth wheel. So we were doing the RV thing. It was just my husband and I, and it was that second half of life where you're like, you've waited for this, right? You raised your babies, and now it's just the two of you, and this is the whole reason you got married young in the first place, you know? And so wasn't too long before I woke up one morning and I had this thought running through my head all night. Prosperity to providence, prosperity to providence. When I woke up, I was like, that is a really weird, what is that? And it, it all night, it was like, you know, when you're in that state where you know you're asleep, but you're kind of awake all night. So I said, okay, God, wrote it down, started praying over it. And like you said, we'll talk about the book in detail more. But the fascinating thing about the book was it, it, the direction that the Holy Spirit was going was showing me that what I call American Christianity, we have two different gospels, right? We either have the prosperity gospel or the providential God gospel, and we'll, we'll unpack that. But it really comes down to 
how does God work in suffering? Right. What is his role in suffering? And what does that look like? And so I wrote the book on suffering and pain. <laughs> and nine months later, uh, we get the call. And I'll, I mean, I'll never forget. I have my daughter's face seared into my memory. She FaceTimed us. And she was sobbing to the point where it was, it was a gut sob, you know. And immediately we're thinking what happened to our other daughter. But right. no, she said, Mom, Michelle's dead. And there's just no words to describe what came over me, us, you know, my yeah. husband and I, because yeah. he, he took care of her. When, you know, she, he did everything he could to serve her in, in Peter's place as much as possible. And he was she was important to all of us. Right. Shock, I guess, yeah. was yeah. the biggest thing. Um, because when she had adopted the baby, she had asked us if there was you know, if we would take care of her, if anything happened to her. And we had said, yes, of course. Yeah. Right. And, you know, when you commit to that, you're thinking, OK, well, maybe when they're, they'll be in high school, if something happens, we'll help them finish high school, right. get to college, it'll be fine. You never think you're yeah. going to get a one year old. No. She was it was two, two weeks after her first birthday. Wow. And Michelle was just gone. She woke up one morning from an accidental mix of medications and <sighs> didn't wake up. And so overnight, my best friend of 20, would have been 24, 25 years, was gone, and I was a mom again. Wow. Wow. That's, that's a big load. Yeah, it was rough. It was really rough. I look back, and I, I, I understand now what people mean about having long-term shock. Right. Because I was a walking zombie for at least three months. Yeah. And all I knew to do was just do the next right thing. Do the next yeah. right thing. Yeah. Uh, and just use all of the word of God that I had and put it into practical practice, right? Because right. I wasn't feeling very spiritual. I was shocked. I was right. just shocked. Yeah. And she didn't have her will in place. And that's one thing that, you know, nobody would have blamed us if we didn't step up, right? Right. Nobody would have. And without the will, that meant there was a lot of more, there was a lot more challenges in doing so. And so all of a sudden I find myself representing myself in a court system. And I, it's been two years now. We're still not done with it, um, with probate. Uh, and and I'm, I'm trying to get guardianship. And I, I, didn't, I didn't even have adoption on my mind. I didn't have any of this. Right. You know? And it's, it's family court or probate court or guardianship court, all those things. I'm like, these weren't words in my vocabulary. Correct. When you try to keep your marriage together for, <laughs> for all these years so that you're not having to be in that position, right? So it was just, I, I, don't, I don't know if I really know what I was doing right. other than just I wanted to commit, I wanted to fulfill my commitment to Michelle. I told her I would. And she asked me for a reason. Yeah. You know, it, she, it, she could have asked other family members. She could have asked anyone. Right. And I know why she asked me, and I wanted to fulfill that commitment as best I could. So, woo! Yes. <laughs> so we had a 20, I guess it would have been 21-year-old at the time, 23-year-old, and an almost 2-year-old. Wow. That was, that was so wild. that shakes your world. That rattles your world. It changes the trajectory. You're going this way. You're in this new town, and now everything's yeah. changed. Yep. So hard. Yeah. Especially when you're going, God, I know you told me to do this. Yes. And I've walked with you long enough to know that it was you. It wasn't just my crazy head. It wasn't the pizza I had last night. Yes, like, you know yes. what I mean? Like, this was you, God. Right. Um, so there was a lot to sort out there. But I think the most important thing that I walked away with on this was it was everything that God built in me before yes. the storm that helped me survive the storm. Yeah. And we tend to put that in reverse, right? We tend to say, well, all of these things are happening because God has a plan. Yeah. You know, so he's letting all this pain happen in your life because he's going to use it someday. Yeah. And that really hurts my heart to think about, right? Because could you say that same thing to a young girl who's been sex trafficked? Correct. Raped 40 times a day? Yeah. You'd ha if it's true for us, it'd have to be true for her That's too. Right. God is never the abuser. No, he's not. And I knew going into this, if I'm to face this battle, it's my choice. He wasn't pressuring me. Yeah. Um. He wasn't going to be mad at me if I didn't, right? Mm -hmm. But he was going to be there for me if That's I did. Right. That's right. Yeah. 
Well, you've definitely, we've hit a vein, you know, and I know the Lord wants to minister. Um, I hate that we don't have more time, but I also know that the anointing's on you just to pray. There's women that are watching right now. There's people with the wrong perception of God. They're at a critical crossroad. They're in agony. They yeah. think God did it. Their hearts are broken, and I just want to give the opportunity to pray for them. Yeah, absolutely. God, thank you that you are good, and you are only good. Amen. There is no shadow of turning in you. There's nothing in you that is dark. You only want good for us. It's your kindness that leads us yes. to repentance. God, I just pray for the women and for the families out there that have suffered from trauma and shock and are having a hard time reconciling it because it seems like you just stood there and let it happen. God, I pray that they would sense your Holy Spirit talking now. Yes. And even though they don't have it all figured out right now, we'll unpack it later, but you feel the Lord speaking to you. I just want you to come to him with your heart. And I just want you to surrender and just yes. say, God, there's something here for me that you want me to know. Yes. And I know he wants you to know that he loves you and he's so proud of you. Yes. Yes. And there hasn't been a moment mm. that he looked at you and didn't see anything that didn't look like his son, Jesus. That is the entire point of your salvation. Yes. You are right with him. And he is going to help you through this. Yes. He has a way out for you. Yes. And so in Jesus' name, I just thank you, God, that you are revealing that way out and that you are restoring. God, because now as we go into a place where we surrender and we say, you know what, God, I'm not blaming you anymore. You can step in and do exactly what you did with Job double any of his trouble. Yeah. God, thank you that that's how you do things with us in Jesus' name. Jesus' Amen. name, Jesus' name. Christy, thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you watching today. Listen, go to christynarcy.com. There's so much more there and God wants to continue to do this healing journey in your heart. He wants to heal your broken heart. I'm Jen Nell and I encourage you, come home.